What is up, La Familia? It's your boy, Z-Dog MD, a.k.a. Dr. Zubin Nemanja. Welcome to the show. Today we're gonna to talk about, is it too soon to get the flu shot? Because they're available, you see the ads everywhere. Is it time to do it? A lot of, obviously, healthcare providers often need to get it in order to work, or they have to wear the mask of shame. We've done other shows on why you should get the flu shot and why you shouldn't elect for the mask of shame unless you have a very good reason. All that aside, I will divert you to those shows uh, with links later. Right now we're gonna talk about, is it too early to get the flu shot? Also, we're gonna talk a little bit about measles outbreaks that have been happening via airplane, potentially. Uh, scary, 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 scary. Anyways, also I wanna give a quick pitch. We have developed a nice little tribe called the Super Pack of people who have become supporters of the show by clicking the little button, and I'll put a link in that uh, after the show. Those guys, for the cost of like a mocha, laka, chaka, pino at Starbucks per month, $4.99, uh, get access to small group discussions with me almost every night, early releases, discount codes on the store, that kind of thing. But the main thing is those small groups allow us to have really in-depth, uncensored discussions because I know they can't just click share. So the discussion stays within the super pack, which means we can talk about stuff that then gonna, it's gonna come out to this main page. Like, should I interview a lunatic? Is that a bad idea? Or is it a good idea to give them a platform to talk? Things like this, we have these discussions, the direction of this movement. The, the 499 actually helps grow the movement and support it. So it really, really, really helps us, allows us to stay independent, less sponsors, less other entanglements. And that is a huge way to grow this movement. So if you believe in what we're trying to do in building Health 3.0 and you wanna actually help actualize it, come join the Super PAC, but really only if you wanna have those more in-depth discussions with me. All right, that all being said, is it too, too early to get the flu vaccination? So scientists, and this is still an area of debate, um, because you know every year the strains are a little bit different and immunity wanes from flu vaccination. So it, it, it not only do, does the antibody related immunity actually fade over the months, but if you get a flu shot from last year and the strain is different this year, which it often is, it's not gonna protect you very well, or it might only have partial protection. So maybe you'll have a little wor less worse flu, but the best bet is to get the flu vaccination every year. And the question is when to do it. So the flu season now can extend in the Northern hemisphere through March. And we often look to our uh, brothers and sisters in the Southern Hemisphere for clues because since the seasons are inverted, they're having their flu season you know, while we're having summer. And what the Australians, that's not a knife, are reporting is that uh, this year it's a little milder uh, flu season and sort of similar circulating strains. So we're hoping, fingers crossed, that that's what's gonna happen in the US and the Northern Hemisphere in Europe this year, but you cannot guarantee that. The virus can mutate, different strains can circulate, and lots of things can happen. So do not, if you got a flu shot last year, do not rely on it at all this year. So this year they're formulating the strains and we'll probably do a separate show on the reemergence of flu mist. So particularly for kids, people who are scared of needles, the nasal flu spray, flu mist. CDC said, don't use it uh, for the last two years. The pharma company that makes it said, okay, let's do some stuff and we'll represent it. And now CDC saying, yeah, okay. But others are more skeptical. There's even other controversies like UPMC Medical Center is only giving its staff the um, non-egg-based non-egg incubated uh, flu vaccination. So meaning it, it, it's created in a, in a different way, all right? So it doesn't involve eggs. I think it involves canine something or other. I have to look at it again. But the bottom line is that the idea there is that when the, the flu vaccine is incubated in eggs, uh, uh, as, it, as part of the growth process, because it's actually culture and growing the virus, killing it, putting the, the, the bits in the vaccine, it can mutate. And so the strain you intend to, to vaccinate against can become something different in theory. Now, so UPMC says, okay, we're just gonna use the, the egg-free version for all our 88,000 uh, people that we're vaccinating, you know, yada, yada. So this is something we could probably talk about in a separate show. And I think those are minor issues. A bigger issue we just wanna address in this show is when to do it. So September, you can start getting 
the flu vaccination. Should you and who should? There goes my computer. Let me get that back on because I like the light. It gives me that creepy, like I'm about to be sucked into the mothership look. See, watch. Oh, is it too much? Let me turn it down. Now it's too little. Um, if you are a nor, you know, a, a, a standard Joe or Jane getting the flu shot uh, for this year, and you're not a child who's never received a flu shot between six months old and eight years old, or a child who has only received a single flu shot in that period, uh, or somebody older with immune compromise, you should probably ideally, and again, this is not entirely settled, but some authorities say you should wait until sometime in October to get the flu shot. And the reason is, is that the flu season really is gonna kick off after, after October. And after getting the shot, it's gonna take two weeks for the uh, antibodies to build up and for you to develop proper immunity. So there's a lag between the shot and the immunity. So if you get it too late in the season, you could catch flu even after you get the shot for two weeks, all right, when your uh, immunity is building up. Of course, you can get flu even if you've gotten the shot, if the flu vaccine is not quite matched with the strain that year, uh, or you didn't develop a, a robust antibody response, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So all that being said, the idea is that if you go to early, like in September, and the vaccine antibodies wane over the months and the flu season extends into March, you could theoretically lose some immunity and end up catching flu if you vaccinate too early. That's the theory. So probably the ideal time is in October. Now the caveats for that for average Joes is that, and Janes, is that if you think there's a chance you're gonna forget or not be able to get it and it's just there and you, it's easy and you're like, I'm just gonna do it now, do it now! Because the chances are you're not, you're gonna drop the ball, you're gonna make up excuses not to do it again, and then you're just not gonna get vaccinated. And that is vastly worse than getting vaccinated a little early. So that's one of the caveats. The second caveat is for children. The, between six months, that's when you can start getting the vaccination because before that, uh, infants don't really make great antibodies. They're still relying on the mother's uh, uh, antibodies. And so um, after six months, you can vaccinate. And those vaccines are two vaccinations at least 28 days apart. And so because they're at least 28 days apart and flu season's gonna kick in, you know, later in the fall, you probably wanna get your first vaccination as soon as you can, as soon as it's available, so September. Then 28 days later, it's already October, you get your second. Two weeks of lag before the immunity builds up and then you're good. So for little kids, you probably want it, you probably do wanna get it earlier. Um, will the shot give me autism, LOL, Mary Mendoza? No. <laughs> uh, all right, so and then that's other videos, obviously. We're not gonna address that here because that's just, again, it's, it's pretty much settled science. All right, the second group of people who may wanna consider getting it um, definitely on the October side and not early are people who are, considerably older or who have compromised immune systems. And the reason is there's some evidence in those populations, and again, this is not settled science. There's some evidence that their immunity wanes faster than average Joe or Jane. So if that's the case, getting it too early means they might be vulnerable later in the season, okay? So those are all the kind of caveats. And I think what, what we're ultimately gonna have to do uh, is kind of look in keep doing research, keep working on improved flu vaccines because they're by no means perfect. And I know there's probably gonna be a million comments from anti-vaxxers and from average Joe and J Jane healthcare people who are like, I don't think the flu shot works. And every time I get the flu shot, it gives me the flu and I'm allergic to eggs so I can't get the flu shot. And um, one time I got the flu shot and I got a pimple and I don't like pimples. And these are just the guys complaining, all right? So uh, all that stuff's been talked about and debunked elsewhere. The second thing I wanna talk about today, apart from get your damn flu shot, especially if you're a healthcare professional, is this measles outbreak that's going around. So, so already this year, we have more measles cases than we had in 2017. 
where is the measles coming from? It's typically an unvaccinated uh, Yankee who ends up going abroad, gets measles in a country where it's more prevalent uh, because they're you know second world or third world, brings it back on an airplane or a boat and spreads it to people who either have compromised immunity, so who are too young, too old, or immunocompromised and cannot uh, uh, get an effect from vaccine, or the unvaccinated, and then outbreaks happen. Now, you can be vaccinated and still get measles because some people are incompletely vaccinated. Maybe they didn't get the series of the MMR. Uh, maybe they got it a long time ago and some immunity has waned. There's lots of reasons, but two shot, two, the series of two MMR, when done correctly, is 97% effective in preventing measles. That's very, very good, right? So the key, the key point here is until we get community immunity, when enough people are vaccinated in, in the herd of, of, of sheeple, as the anti-vaxxers will call us, because they're idiots, um, is when you get that, that, that threshold, then there's enough sort of, a, 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 there are enough walls in the community that even if there's some measles floating around, it can't get in because there's no good hosts. The problem is now there are good hosts for measles because people are dumb and they're not vaccinating and then they're traveling and then they're coming back with measles. Measles is one of the most contagious illnesses known to man. So the CDC just announced that there were, how many flights here? Four flights between Dallas, Houston, Houston, and Harlingen, Harlingen and, and Houston and Dallas uh, in August, August 21st, August 22nd on Southwest. By the way, I've taken this flight because uh, I've been down there doing a talk for South Padre Island. And they're trying to find all the passengers on those flights because uh, a sick passenger with measles was on those flights and ended up uh, staying in the airports for an hour and hang out on the flights. And you know, with the runny nose and all that, the early signs, coryza, cough, fever, of measles than the, than the rash. So since measles has an incubation period off, uh, <laughs> uh, look at, wait, 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 this caught my attention. Squirrel! Uh, something about Lilian, Liliana Cook, who's a supporter of the show. Thank you, Liliana, you're super pack for life. You know what we say on about anti-vaxxers back on the super pack, right? <laughs> it's not printable <laughs> in public spaces because <laughs> they're assholes. Um, there are some pro-diseasers in the comments. Yes, there are. There always are when Z Dog talks about vaccines, because it's like an idiot magnet. If I start talking about vaccines, a few science people show up and they're like, "Yeah, Z, that's right." And then it's like it sends out beams, like a like like a like a moron signal instead of a instead of a bat signal. It just it's a big M for moron or big L for loser, and all the anti-vaxxers come out and they're like, now's our chance to hear the sound of our own voices. I'm gonna tell Z-Dog what a bald, chemotherapeutic looking, dark circles under his eyes, alien baby clown he is. Therefore, he's poisoned by toxins and metals and aborted fetal tissue that are in the vaccines. Morons. I love this little M moron signal flying out into... Come on, morons. Um, all right, anyways, back to measles. So now CDC is trying to reach every passenger on these flights because they could, they, since the incubation period is 28 days, you're not gonna find out you have measles until up to 28 days. So you gotta stay vigilant. And you know, I don't think you're gonna quarantine all those people, but you're gonna, the first sign of any um, symptoms, uh, it's gonna get real because this is highly contagious. And as we know from the previous live show we did about the nurse with the anti-vaccine sentiment on the Facebook page who was threatening to swab this patient's cheek and spread it around as a kind of bioterror, um, there are sick children in our hospitals who suffer from measles. So in the old days, three to four million measles cases of which four to 500 would die. And there would be about a, th I forget what it is, um, one in a thousand, was it? Let me look up the exact, yeah, one in a thousand of those patients would end up with encephalitis, which is swelling of the brain, which can lead to disability, long-term brain damage, and death. So one of the magics of the modern world is vaccinations that have prevented this. And believe me, I think most of the shit we do in medicine is bullshit. It doesn't work. It's not really, it's mostly placebo. It's mostly mind body effect. The one thing that does work for sure, without a doubt, is vaccines and the same hippie ass alternative medicine kooks who I actually agree with on some things like mind body connection, 
are the ones to throw out the only thing that works. The only thing that works. But if they show up to the ER, they're the first person who wants the unnecessary surgery, the unnecessary you know, knee uh, arthroscopy, or the unnecessary spine surgery. Um, they're the first people to ask for that. Oh, or the unnecessary z pack. Oh my God. Um, every time I get this runny nose, the only thing that helps me starts with a Z. A Z pack? Yeah, I think it's that. Um, yeah, it's a Z pack. Moron. Big M, big M flying through space. Uh, so take home points from this. Get your flu vax, ideally in October, unless you're one of the two groups I talked about, young kids who've never been vaccinated or only had one shot or older or immune compromised patients who should get it earlier in September, or you're the person who's gonna forget or not have a chance, just freaking do it, especially if it's free. Uh, which it often is. And so that's one, number two, measles. Get your damn MMR. Be vigilant if you think you see people in the community. It's so difficult to recognize measles now. Do you know why? Because none of us have seen it because we thought we eradicated it until Jenny McCarthy and Andrew Wakefield came around and brought sexy back. Uh, so, okay, get your damn vax. Third call to action, become a ZPAC supporter if you wanna be part of the secret tribe. There's already a bunch of content there for y'all to peek through. If you wanna sign up, give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Give me feedback. Make me a better person, because I need it. Because according to the anti-vaxxers, I'm a bald chemotherapeutic clown who probably um, hates um, babies. And they got one thing right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say what it was off that list. You you decide. All right, CPAC. I love you. Fight the power.